Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with a new topic of condensed matter physics which is low dimensional semiconductor structures. So low dimensional means the dimensions are lowered and the properties or what are the changes in the semiconductor structures we are going to study with its application. So for this we need to first get introduced with the concept which already we know and how to switch over to today's concept that is low dimensional semiconductor structure. So in introduction part let us define first what actually is LDSS that is low dimensional semiconductor structure. So remember here we will be studying the semiconductor systems with their properties different from those of the bulk materials. So bulk materials means three dimensional semiconductors. So till our previous class of condensed matter physics, whatever we have studied is in bulk that is in three dimension. So electrons or the holes, whatever carriers are there, there is no restriction put over for the movement of those carrier. But here, how it is going to change how the confinement take place we need to study. So what actually is a low dimensional semiconductor structure? So these structure consists of semiconducting layers with interface geometry, doping level and the chemical composition and these all things are defined at atomic scale. So that's why we can relate it to the low dimension also. And a new range of structures are available for the physical phenomena to take place on a very short length and short time scales. So because of this shorter length or reduced length and time scales, we consider it as a low dimensional semiconductor structure. So these systems are usually referred to LDSS. So this is how we define low dimensional semiconductor structure, their properties, all the different parameters we will study in our coming classes. So the properties of these structures are quantum mechanical restriction on the degrees of freedom from 2 to 3, 2 to 1 or even to 0. So what does it mean? So if you consider a three dimensional semiconductor, it is nothing but the bulk structure. So when you are considering low dimensional semiconducting structures, there will be restriction put on the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is nothing but freedom for the motion or movement of the carrier. So in semiconductor we just say that electron is free to move in all the direction or mainly you can consider along three direction. That is why we say three dimensional semiconductor. But in this concept or in these structures, there will be some restriction put on these degrees of freedom. That is, if you are having a three-dimensional semiconductor, you may put restriction for the movement of electron or a hole. In general, we can say carrier along any one direction. So, degrees of freedom will reduce from 3 to 2. Again, if you put restriction in another direction also, then again the degree of freedom is reduced to 1 and again if you confine or put the restriction in another direction also then we say that degree of freedom of that system is equal to 0. So based on these degrees of freedom we define different structures under low dimensional semiconductor structures. So this change in Effective dimensionality that is 3 to 1, 2 to 1, uh, sorry, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, and 1 to 0 with length scales is so small it is comparable to that of a de Broglie wavelength of the carriers. And for electron, the de Broglie wavelength is approximately equal to 1.23 nanometers. So, standard conditions are applicable here. And with this length scales so small that 
the quantum size effects become easily observable and it results in changes in the electronic transport as well as optical properties. So because of this confinement or because of the decrease or reduction in the degrees of freedom, we can say the length scale is going to diminish or it is becoming smaller and smaller means we are having now the concept of quantum size effects. So as we are going on reducing the size, we are going to the quantum size or we can say nano scale and in nano scale we can just observe a drastic or a rapid change with respect to the properties. That is it may be electronic transport properties or optical properties. So due to this reduction from bulk semiconductor to low dimensional semiconductor, we can observe a pronounced change in the properties. So what are those changes? We will study later. So these low dimensional semiconductor structures play a critical role in determining the properties of the materials due to different ways of electron interaction in two dimension, one dimension or zero dimensional structure. So if you are considering three dimension, it is not coming under low dimensional structure, but it is bulk. Two dimensional, one dimensional and zero dimensional, these are coming under low dimensional semiconductor structure. And if you just consider the charge carriers to free, to be free to move in any of these direction, let us say the carriers are free to move in two dimension, then the structure is called as quantum well. That is confinement will be along one direction. So out of three degrees of freedom, one direction or one dimension is confined. So it is not able to or the particle or the carrier cannot move along one direction, but along the two other direction, it is free to move. That's why we say it is a two dimensional structure and it is named as quantum well. If again you reduce the degrees of freedom, that is out of three, two are confined and only along one direction it is free to move, then such a low dimensional structure is called as quantum wire or quantum well wire. Coming to the third one, so if the charge carriers are free to move in zero dimension, means it is confined along all the three direction, then the structure is called as a quantum dot. So these are the three low dimensional quantum systems which will be studied in detail in our coming classes. So coming to next part, here quantum mechanics play a major role because the semiconductor size approaches the nano scale. If you consider general semiconductor concept, we are not actually explaining about the quantum system or quantum physics. But as you are reducing the degrees of freedom, means the size effect is coming into picture. That's why the study is coming under nano scale. And always nano scale is studied under quantum mechanical regime. So that is one thing you need to remember. Then why there is a need of such structure? So the main advantage of these low dimensional semiconductor systems are in realizations of important devices like a double heterostructure lasers. Then these double heterostructure lasers with low threshold as well as at low temperature. That is the main thing which we understand using the concept of LDSs. And second thing is we can understand the properties of high effective LEDs. Then third one is about the bipolar transistors. Fourth one is PN, PN switching devices and fifth one is 
H A M T that is high electron mobility transistors and many other such opto electronic devices so all these complex devices their properties their working mainly depends on the quantum mechanical phenomena which is explained under low dimensional semiconductor structure so if you consider a bulk semiconductor you can't fabricate or realize the importance of these semiconducting devices so the concept of ldss is very important if you go for application part of view so next if we need to understand about the two dimensional one dimensional as well as zero dimensional systems first we need to know some details about three dimensional system so already we know many a details or whatever we study in general is three dimensional system only so till our last class we studied with respect to three dimension so let us just revise some of the things and if you remember these things easily we can switch over to the lower dimensional structure or systems so these three dimensional systems are nothing but the bulk semiconductors or bulk systems so here the transport as well as optical characteristics of a bulk material depend on energy band structure so based on the changes in the energy band we define many phenomena as well as the change in the properties which we already studied in our previous two units or topics we can say that is semiconductor its properties as well as transporting semiconductors and optical properties so wherever you go you will just study with respect to energy bands and in bulk semiconductors the carriers are free to move in all the three direction so there is no restriction to the movement of carrier and in semiconductor we know that both electrons as well as holes are acting as charge carriers but there is no restriction on their movement that is we can say the degrees of freedom is equal to 3 and e versus k that is energy versus wave vector relation for the electrons is given by the solution of the time independent schrodinger equation and that schrodinger equation is minus h cross square by 2me into del square xi plus e minus v of r into xi equal to 0 and the solution for this schrodinger equation is xi k of r is equals to u k of r into exponential of i k dot r where u k of r is the periodic function or bloch function having some periodicity as the lattice for a free electron having only kinetic energy and other things are same that is v of r is periodic potential produced by the nuclei of the atoms and other electrons and me is mass of the free electron that is the charge carrier so by using this solution if you solve you can find out what actually is the energy of three dimensional system and it is equals to h cross square k square by 2 me so this thing we have already studied and whenever you study any property or any concept of bulk semiconductor we just directly say that energy is directly proportional to square of the wave vector so just we draw the parabolic energy bands and explain the absorption process emission process conductivity all these things so main thing in bulk semiconductors is that this energy solution where we observe e is directly proportional to k square that's why get a quadratic nature of energy bands then coming to another main property of bulk semiconductors that is the transport or optical responses in bulk semiconductors show the dependence on density of states of the system so here another parameter is the density of states which we explained as g of e 
in our semiconductor unit. So, the density of states per spin per unit volume of a three dimensional electron gas in a bulk semiconductor is given as rho of E for three dimensional structure is equals to 1 by 2 pi whole square into 2 m star by h cross square whole raised to 3 by 2 into square root of E where we observe that density of states is directly proportional to square root of energy. So energy is again h cross square k square by 2 m star which is explaining majority of the parameters or properties of any semiconductor. So if you plot a graph of density of states as a function of energy for bulk semiconductors we can observe a parabolic nature that is rho of E is directly proportional to square root of E and we get this type of nature for density of states. So these are some of the main points which we need to remember while switching over to low dimensional system. So now we just saw what are different parameters based on which we explain three dimensional system. So when we go for next class we will be linking these parameters with respect to two dimensional or low dimensional system. So what will be the energy, what is the density of states for different confinements or for different low dimensional semiconductor structures will be studied in our next classes. So next class we will be starting with low dimensional system that is two dimensional system where we are going to explain about MOSFET, inversion layer etc. So this is for today's class. Thank you.